Hello and welcome back to the Sharks World, ladies and gentlemen. Today's video is on a topic similar to a previous video of mine titled Sharks are as social as mammals. In this video, we'll be looking at the great white shark and covering an article that explores how social these animals are and potential dynamics we may have missed out on. As always in my videos, I will leave a link to the article in the description below. Do yourself a favor and give it a good read. With those details out of the way, let's not waste any time and dive right in. Grab you a cold drink, pull up a chair to the table, and let's talk about how social great whites are. So, let's start with what we know about sharks in general being social animals. I would argue that one of the reasons the general public sees sharks as solitary animals is because we, as mammals, don't recognize the cues fish have or use as far as being social. Part of the human condition is that we are obsessed with ourselves and we subconsciously identify with and recognize anything similar to us. We recognize social cues in mammals, but assume other animals need to have the same social cues in order to be considered social or intelligent. An example of this bias involves dinosaurs. When we first started discovering dinosaur skeletons and putting them together, we originally thought they stood upright like us. I would argue part of the reason we thought that was because of our self-obsession bias. Same thing when we thought dinosaurs were just dumb reptiles. When we're finding out more and more that dinosaurs, especially theropods, are way smarter than we thought. And not just them. Over the past three decades, we have been discovering that lizards, birds, crocodilians, and sharks have been way smarter than we originally thought, some comparable to mammals. And when I say smart, I mean smart in the way that they evolved to be. Check out my video on shark brains versus mammal brains. You'll understand. With this context in mind, let's take a look at the article. The research itself took place at the infamous Guadalupe Island off the coast of Mexico. There, several white sharks were tagged and studied in regards to social behavior. Similar to the sand tiger sharks, it was discovered that not only would white sharks stay within close proximity to one another, but whenever they showed up to cage diving sites, they would show up with particular individuals, as in they had preferred individuals to spend time with, like buddies or colleagues, if you will. Now, why is this? They hypothesized in the article that one reason sharks would stay within close proximity to one another is to be within eavesdropping distance. Which makes sense if you think about it. Two sharks are swimming in the same area, and one catches food or hones in on potential prey. The other shark notices the action now and has an increased chance of catching food or eating the remains of the first shark. Sure, in this instance, they may not be directly working together, but it's more of a case of divide and conquer. Now, I know what some of you might be thinking. Shark toes, wouldn't the other sharks not like this because they could potentially steal a meal or get in the way of hunting? Perhaps, and sure, this does happen in the wild sometimes. But one thing I've discussed before is that white sharks, and other sharks for that matter, are surprisingly well behaved 
when interacting with one another. Say for instance, when two sharks sort out a pecking order between the two of them, they follow said pecking order without rebellion because it's a better alternative to both sharks getting into a fight and doing some serious damage to one another. Same thing for this scenario. Sure, one shark could hear when the other catches a meal or finds their prey, but the reverse is also true. Hanging out with one another increases both of their chances of finding food. But shark toes, wouldn't it be better for a shark to just find and establish its own territory and hunt there? You're thinking like a human and truly don't grasp just how big of a place the ocean is, especially open water areas. It's a lot of space to cover and two sharks can cover twice the distance. That and sharks don't have territories in the same way that terrestrial predators do. This also tells us that these sharks hang out with specific individuals and the article confirms from their tagging data that different sharks had different habits and personalities. For example, some of them were very social and interacted with multiple other great whites. Others spent less time hanging around other sharks. It was also noted that all the sharks they tagged passed other sharks multiple times, as in came within a hundred feet of each other, like passing someone in a grocery store, as this article put it. Another example of particular habits certain individuals had is some preferred to hunt in shallow waters, while others preferred open water. This shows preference and personality much like some humans like math, while others prefer science or history. There's other benefits to sharks hanging around one another. I've stated in multiple videos that one of the ways baby sharks learn to hunt is by watching other sharks and sharing information with one another. This habit doesn't just go away when they're adults, especially since it produces results. But shark toes, how do sharks share information if they don't have hands or make any sounds? That is something we don't know for sure yet. But I do know this. Sharks are learning from each other and gathering information from one another somehow. There's even a level of coordination with some of them. While this example isn't in this particular article, I have heard references where sometimes two sharks will work together to hunt seals. One will swim in clear view of the seal or seals to get their attention, while the other sneaks them from below or behind. Sharks are extremely smart animals, and I'd say that this is well within the realm of reason. What do you think of all this? For me, I think we're only scratching the surface of social shark behaviors and interactions. And I believe part of that reason is because we as mammals don't pick up on the social cues of fish without extreme attention to detail. Let me know what your thoughts are on the subject in the comments below. This is going to be where we end today's video. Thank you for once again giving me some of your time. Remember to drink plenty of water in Celsius. And I'll see you in the next video. Until then.